Hello everybody, Hello. James here, Storytime with Dutch Mantel, whatever number it is, we don't know. Anyway, uh, we can do the plugs, we can do everything else another time because we have a guest on, a very important guest, and he's got a flight to catch quite soon. So I'm going to send it back to Dutch from 1964 when his camera was made. Hello. Stop it, James. This is a bunch of crap. I had my camera working, then Ricky had all these damn problems. And Hey, Ricky. Well, hi, Dutch. You always put the heat on me, so don't make it. I do. I do. Well, I, I'm used yes. to doing that. I have to put the heat on you. Because but, you know, your camera might be bad, but you're still looking good this morning. I mean, Stop you're it. a very Stop handsome it. gentleman today. I'm not kidding you. Stop it. Sir Ricky. Sympathy Sam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you're looking great. All right. All right. <laughs> Ricky, I'm just, I just want to run through all this, and I got a lot of good things I got to tell you. Uh what year did you start? Was it right after the end of the Civil War? Uh, I, I started uh, uh, about 10 years after you did. Yeah, and well, uh, so whenever that, whatever you want to say. Um, wasn't Abraham Lincoln I, your first referee? That's what I heard. <laughs> he, yeah, special referee. He sure was. Uh, <laughs> no, get I started Dutch. I had, you know what? I, really, I had my first match when I was 16 years old. And and get I was his in the territory of my dad. Yes. No. <laughs> uh, I was in Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> my dad worked for the Lee Lee Fields. That's when Lee oh, Fields yeah. had Pensacola. Oh, yeah. And uh, and Ricky Fields, his son, was breaking into business. And just for some reason, they they let us have a match. And I was 16 years old. And it wasn't bad, you know. And, and then this, uh, is what I, this is what I heard. I don't know if this is true or not. I heard they went out of business about a month after that match you had. It just no, killed the, out of business it killed the, the whole territory. Day. The next day. <laughs> uh, the next day that went out of business. Hey, ladies and no, gentlemen, I, 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 I want to I wanna apologize for my camera because Ricky got in here late, and I'm trying to get all this set up, and then he messed me all up. That's why my camera is not, yeah. not as good looking as Ricky okay. and not good looking as James. All right, Dutch man, tell you. So, so then you, when did I, I meet you? I remember the first time I met you. I met you at a cosmopolitan health spa. Uh, sure did. I don't out. know what the, I don't know what and, the hell uh, I was doing. That was it probably, I was working for uh, Jerry Jarrett at that time. Yeah. You were working for uh, Nick, but see, I started at Nick. No, you were working for Nick. But I, I, tell, I walked up the dust so, because I see, I, I walked up to my winner. Are you Dutch Mantel? And you what? No. <laughs> I will. Excuse me. I guess I was just a kid. What did I tell you? <laughs> I remember you went, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then you walked off. Then I come over there. I said, yeah, I'm just messing with you. And then that's, I knew who you were. Yeah. So I, I'd seen you. So. Yeah. But can I, can I say this? This is not, and I'm not being a stooge or nothing like that, Dutch. Yeah, people don't understand. In today's world, in our business, uh, the boys never have time to bond. And, and it's like a lot of people don't understand about, a lot of, like all these guys getting let go from WWE. You know, it's not the part about getting let go from WWE, but you get let go of the life that you know, uh, mm -hmm. the people that you bonded with, the people that you hang with. That's the part that hurts the most. And uh, that's what some people don't really understand. I was lucky in my younger career because me and my dad and you must have put two million miles on the highway. And then, <laughs> and on that time, I got to bond and I got to listen and I got to learn and I got to have so much damn fun that nobody could ever imagine. And I always wanted to thank you for that. You was always good to me. You always tell me things about screwed up and but me and you always had a good time <laughs> together touch <laughs> oh, yeah. we did we had a, a great time and you know what it's a part of my life that i miss that's the things i miss in the business it's you know and that's that's what i was relating to like the guys getting let go from wwe and all this stuff it's just a part of life that you don't want to let go and you have to let it go you know i asked you one time ricky i says and I, and I remember I was talking because you were the Rock and Roll Express, drew tons of money everywhere. And I remember when it got its start in Memphis. It was a Jerry Jarrett idea. 
no, it was a Jerry Lawler idea. And I remember going yeah. to going to Louisville one day and he asked me, uh, do you have an idea for a gimmick for Ricky and Robert? And I thought and thought and thought and thought. And then I says, well, just just out of the blue, I said, why don't you just dress them up like like rock and roll stars? You know, they would wear the bandanas and all this. And he said, that's not, that's a good idea. And he went in there and he looked at a couple of magazines and come out and he said, well, that's their gimmick. Then I heard you told me yeah. that uh, Jimmy Hart had that idea. We both well, might have had the Jimmy idea Hart at the same had, time. Jimmy, Jimmy Hart hired the name. Okay. Okay. Because they're looking for us a name. Mm -hmm. and, 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 okay. So Ricky, Robert, R and R, but, uh, and, and Jimmy Hart tells Lawler, he goes, why don't you call him the Rock and Roll Express? Mm -hmm. And Jerry Lawler goes, that's the worst name I ever heard, but we have <laughs> to go with it. Because <laughs> we're going on TV. Uh, and I, I was looking back. Let, let me ask you something, Dutch. Whatever happened to Chief Thundercloud? I don't know what happened to him. He I, think he, I, think, I think he did. Okay. Sure I was did. just wondering. And Coco Samoa, I know he died. Uh, you know, these are guys that, even though we grew up in the same territories together, even though it's old and you think back like that, but I'm not getting off the rock and roll. It just hit my mind because I wanted to ask you that. You know, those two guys, you know, they, you know, Coke, especially Coco. <laughs> I worked with him every night. You mm -hmm. know, he, I, he was a great worker, man. And Chief Thundercloud, I never forget it. Chief Thundercloud called you. We was doing something. He, he called me at you beside he goes uh Dutch Mantel. I know every time I call you I want something. <laughs> yeah. Goes, every time I call you, that's I the want only something. Time you call me. He goes, but that's the only time you call me. <laughs> so I started to laugh my ass off, man. But go ahead. That, James, here's a story for you. The first night that the rock and roll were, was going to appear in Memphis. And you didn't appear on that Saturday TV before the show, did you? Or no? We just no, announced. We, didn't. That's tough. we just announced rock we and roll, so the people didn't know anything. So well, I no, remember they, they said we have a brand new tag team coming in. Yeah. Uh, don't. Uh, it's just a brand new tag team coming in, and it's going to be hot. And uh, we didn't have no. They didn't name us until that's the day. It was on a Sunday afternoon in Memphis. We didn't do. Somehow, me and Robert wasn't at TV. I think we were just coming in. I was coming in. From I, I think. I don't think. You, I don't think you did TV. Huh? And I think. I think it was no. still. A, I think it was a Monday, Ricky. I may be wrong. Well, no, it was a Sunday. And no the reason why I know it was a Sunday afternoon is because yeah. uh, they're having the flea market out back at Memphis, and me, Robert, and Lawler walked over to the flea market and, and bought bandanas. Okay. Uh, damn flower cheek. He had them hanging on us, and I'm serious. We, it was on a Sunday afternoon. Who paid and, for uh, them? Did Lawler pay for Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, and, and it, hey, he gave us our but, first outfits, too, and, and the one Robert wore, he looked like he was naked and because uh, it was <laughs> his color of the skin. You remember that? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, but but because uh, I never forget, because they the new tag team, we working with Coco Samoa and, uh, and somebody else, but that uh, – they hear our music. We come running out. You know, but and some fan told me after he said, "Hell, I didn't know if y'all was Indians or gypsies coming." To we had so much shit <laughs> hanging on us uh, until we got our stuff. This down. is what I remember about the night. Robert was in the dressing room and he was getting dressed, yeah. and he was embarrassed to put the stuff on. He was embarrassed yeah. to put the bandanas on. And I remember you told him, oh, God damn, Robert, stop your bitching. Put the shit on and let's go. <laughs> yeah. And he, put it, and he put it on, went out there. The crowd really, uh, these guys got over from the get-go. And the crowd was yeah. screaming. And then Robert, he changed his tune. So, yeah. But, you know, and that's a good thing you said that, Dutch, because, you know, Robert was tag team partner with his brother Ricky and me and you remember those trips we used to take on the road my yeah, daddy I remember always them. I'm trying I'm trying to forget them 
look here, my daddy always told me this. He said, son, when you go to a territory, you're never going to get over the booker or the fucking owner. You're never going to. They're going to be the main event. But always mm-hmm. remember this. They got to have a semi-main event, and that's your tag team wrestling. Mm-hmm. So first I went with Eddie Gilbert. I was tag team partners with him out in Oklahoma. I uh, did a couple more tag teams. And then when I met Ken Lucas, you know, and I don't give a damn what anybody says. He He's the most underrated wrestler. He was a great uh, – to me, Dutch, he was the greatest – baby face that ever lived in this world. Sonny, I was tag team partner, Sonny King. And then, uh, mm-hmm. but we, uh, and Kenny taught me a lot. So when we came back, I was really, I, I want a tag team partner. You understand me? Mm-hmm. And Robert hit the, Robert fit in there because this was me. I mean, it wasn't a part of that. But so I tried to tell the story of our matches by selling. And when I sold and gave Robert, Robert was at, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't the best talker in the world. Robert couldn't say shit with a mouthful. But then you had to go. Uh, but I was looking for that and to give him that hot tag and instantly. But the first time we worked on TV, after him being partners with his brother and me being tag, is that we were our chemistry. Damn, Dutch, it just it blew up. Our chemistry was unbelievable in the ring. You know, it's it's good to have you you, you know this sometimes too. You know. But without saying it, you know, we, or if we knew what we were going to do before, right off the bat. If I did something, he knew what was coming after. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and it made our timing in our matches so great. In today's y'all had, matches. Y'all had some great matches. I mean, yeah, but I'm saying in the day, you know, I just don't understand that. I mean, I have a rising school and I go down <laughs> to teach and these guys, but holy fuck, Dutch. When you're at, you know, I, I'm 67 and I'm still as busy as I was. I'm with my son. Have you met my son yet, Dutch? I met him. Badass, yeah. buddy. Yeah. He's badass. He's still got another year in college. Uh, this is his senior year. But uh, he, uh, about what I was getting to, I mean, nowadays these guys, they go, I mean, you ought to be in the dressing room and everybody's going over their matches. You know, I had to go piss the other day and I had to duck three clothes lines and reverse the goddamn hip toss to get into the fucking bathroom. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's amazing to watch these guys back here, man. They just and then it's all day. First, they all go to the ring. They go over uh, their matches, blah blah blah. Then they come back and they sit down and they still, they still, they still, they still. And I'm thinking, and not here. I am, sixty seven years old. I go grab a headlock. <laughs> you know yeah, what? We never did that back in our day they would come in there i have seriously i have gotten a finish in memphis going to the ring for the match okay listen that's the way it the matches was i I remember in nwa you know dusty you know but he can't fade uh bill especially bill watts when Mm -hmm. i worked for him too 99 percent of the time you didn't get your finish till you got in the ring and Mm -hmm. and they they didn't tell you we're gonna do this right here they say all they tell you is the hill's over or the baby face is over. Mm-hmm. That's all they would say. But yep. see, you had such great workers mm-hmm. at that time. Holy shit. You could just make magic every night and come up with a hell of a finish. This is one thing that I'll never forget because we made all those videos on you guys in Memphis. Yeah. And then when Bill Watts wanted you to go to Mid South, they said, okay. Yeah. You can take them. And Jerry Jarrett started sending them those videos that Memphis had done on you and Robert. I think he started about a month before you got there. By the time you guys got there, there was no get over time. You were already over. And they brought you in on the first first night. And you won the titles the first night in, right, from the Russians. Yes? Yeah. And and we were were in – Lafayette, Louisiana, mm-hmm. our first night in. But when we got there, Dutch, I mean, you could not believe it. I, I told Roberts, what the hell is going on here? I mean, that's cars back up, <laughs> everything. And we pull out, we pull up to the back. Yeah, you said, the news what's, that runs main up to us. what's that main event tonight? Must be hot. 
<laughs> Listen, they uh, a woman come up and stuck a camera in my face, and she goes, "Tell me about y'all. Y'all are y'all the Rock and Roll Express?" And she tells me, "There's been people camped out here for a week to buy tickets to watch the wrestling match tonight." And you know, then then and then you're looking around. I'm t- thinking to myself, "Well, holy shit, Robert! They come to see us," <laughs> and that uh, it was. But you know what, old Dutch? It, it, it's not it tuck the boys. Uh, you know, Nikolai Vokov uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Barry Dorso, they were together then. And amazing. You know, it's like you said, you don't go over high spots. You don't get to talk to the heels. Hell, Bill Watson, fire your ass in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just went to the ring with them. And it was just like magic. Holy shit. Yeah, it's you know, and he, that's the same thing Dusty did with us at NWA. You know, at that time, it's you know, all American kids, Rock and Roll Express. Like, they sent all the videos in there. We worked with Ivan and uh, Barry Dorso again. They, they were the world champions, and we beat them. So you beat. Night. So you had the same opponents on the first night in Oklahoma territory as you had when you went to Charlotte. Yeah, but we the Russians. The only thing was different was Nikolai. Okay. Ivan we had Ivan. And uh, did you ever have an experience to meet Ivan Dutch or work with him? Oh, Ivan Cole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What a hell of Who, a work. They had, a, they had oh. another Russian there one time. I was Nikita. Oh, you talking about old beat Boris. Boris. No, had not him. They had another one there. I swear to God, I've been in easier street fights. Oh, in I know I, you talking about. In Asheville, North yes. Carolina, I swear I almost left the ring. And if they asked me why I left, I said, what? well, hell, I, I couldn't beat the guy. Shit, he was beating the dog <laughs> shit out of me. Oh, I remember him when he came in. He, he didn't stay long. No, you know, I, I see why. I his name Prussia right. Khrushchev he was a of Vladimir dude. Pietrov. Yeah, yeah. What was his name, Vladimir James? Vladimir Petrov. Yeah, Vladimir, Vladimir Petrov, Petrov, yeah. God. Yes, he I was remember him. horrible. Anyway, look here, you lock up with him. Look here, you lock up with him and break your own arm, you know, and <laughs> he'd headbutt you. Uh, did I ever tell you the story the first time they brought Nikita Koloff in? No. I mean, tell when me, I went to Tell me that story. Tell everybody else. That's why the people tune yeah. in here. They, they want to hear stories. Well, okay, listen, uh, the, we're in Cleveland, the old stadium they had there. That, that, we had a baseball game. And we went to wrestle after the baseball game. This is Pat and Nikita Koloff. That's the first time that Robert and I got to meet him because it's always Ivan and Barry. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Nikita? I asked him this. I lock up with Nikita and Dutchie headbutts me so hard. I go and I go down on my knees and I fall back onto the ropes. I went, holy shit, accident. You know, and he's walking around. He ain't paying me no attention. I lock up with him again. That this son of a bitch head butts me again. God damn! I went back and I told Robert because it was five minutes in the match. I told Robert, I says, uh, "Pull this big motherfucker off me." <laughs> he goes, "What?" <laughs> this time I locked up Dutch. And I I went like that right there. He had buddy my elbow and it split his eye all the way up. Blood was going everywhere. Boy, is he cussing? Yeah, 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 yeah. But. When I locked up with him that third time, look, had that head back. <laughs> you oh see, God. he didn't know, and I didn't know because I ain't never worked with him before. But I, but when I worked with him that third time, buddy, he you have put that head back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he tells me that every now and then. So that's the greatest education I ever got in a wrestling ring. Okay, where was where was business better? Was it business better in Charlotte? I mean, in Mid Atlantic, where was business the best for you guys? Mid Atlantic, what well, don't you know? It's it, and it's hard, and, and I got to say, are you there? I'm here. My phone just went off. Okay, that was no. Uh, you was asking me about that was Bill Watts was calling business me. Better now. Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> me too. Vince keeps calling me, want me to make Monday Night Raw. I told him I can't do it. Dude. Let me wrong. But uh, we uh. You know, Dutch, and to really understand, you talk about going into Mid-South. I've never been a part of something 
that ever work like that because it's every wrestler's dream. It's not to be that superstar, but it's to work on top in Papa territory. Mm -hmm. Robert and I, and along with the Midnight Express, along with Nikolai Volkov, along with Wrestling 2, Magnum TA, uh, we actually popped Mid-South. You know, if you ever read Bill Watts' book, you know, he owned a territory for 12 years. He said he made more money with the two years that Robert and I was there and he ever made no 10 years he was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did. he's paying all the boys. And, uh, and it, it, it did. See, that was the sensation of, of going from armories to the big, to the bigger high school gyms, to the big auditoriums. And we did. You was, you come in there for a while. You seen that we worked those big auditoriums and we went into hell. We even went to the Superdome. And, but they'd cut the Superdome in half. Yeah. But that whole other half would be sold out. Dude, this is in 1983, and you got 40,000 people at a wrestling match. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, but then, I remember one night we were in the Superdome. That's a Saturday night. We was in the Superdome, held up a yeah. house. The next day, I was at a damn high school gym up there <laughs> in Arkansas. <laughs> someplace. And I said, damn, yeah. this is a damn switch. They're like 200 it people. It was the there. longest. And see, it, 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 it's what these younger guys, man, they're so, you know, I'm glad for it. And like people like you and people like me, we paid to raid for these guys. But see, we didn't have no travel agencies. We didn't have people to book our hotel rooms. We had nothing. You got Zero. there the best way you could. And remember the long, the one, the, the every other weekend you did the Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Don't remind me. And, uh, and if you flew it, Bill Watts would give you a hundred dollars extra on your uh, check. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, but it cost golly, you know, back then. And uh, it was the longest trips, but I had that was, and I'm honestly going to say this: I had more fun in that territory than I ever had in my life because you're on the road every day with the boys. And that's what I was talking about bonding. We had some of the greatest times together. And you know that in Memphis, Memphis, you know, I got, I got to put Memphis up for you. We wasn't a part of it. You were, you were on top, you and Lawler and Dundee and all them, but buddy, it was like Woodstock there. I don't give a damn. Ever, ever, <laughs> everything sold out. I mean, you come uh, in was... on Friday nights to the hotel because you had to do Memphis TV that morning. Hell, you get you can't even find a place to park. Yep. <laughs> it's just packed in there, man, from the fans being there, knowing that we're in town. Yeah, the hotels but, were sold out. Oh yes. You know, you know, they you we did we had to call and make reservations. Whether well, it was there every week, we tell them we'd be back next week, leave you up, mm -hmm. you know. It's the way we had our rooms. But hell, then the boys stayed three or four together in a room. You oh, yeah. Not, you know, we, we you like a to, bunch of travel. We like, we like a bunch of immigrants like they are in New York yeah. now. We'd all just <laughs> pack into you. those rooms and stuff. You wouldn't have to get a room. Oh, you yeah. just take your bag up and find the first restaurant you saw and said, hey, you got room? Yeah, but you, you could. Yeah, come but on you know, in. And it was so good because the fans, the wooden room, they bring food to eat. They bring have food, food. going there and eat. Beer. The, drinks. What? Yes, they had it all for you every week, and, and, and people appreciate. It. They brought you gifts and get everything. And it's greatest shit in the world. You remember Miss Miss Linda down from Bolivar? I you do know, remember her. Big lady, and I love. She was oh, a big I lady. Her to death. She'd make better time yeah, rolling. <laughs> no, no, but I'm just saying, she was always brought us food, cooked us shit, asked you what you want next week for when you come in. From right, it was so cool. I, I like them people, but then, but what I'm getting into, Dutch, but see, it's a great thing when you pop a territory. But then, you see, I, I was in a superdome. Matter of fact, Muhammad Ali was there, and my oldest son, Jonathan, was in the Mob Ali is sitting in the floor with my oldest son playing cars and talking. And I never forget Bill Watts come in to say something to him. He said, Hey, I'm the promoter, Bill Watts. So I'll talk to you in a few minutes. I'm talking to this kid now. Mm -hmm. Swear to God, you know. And then uh, Bill Watts turned around. He goes, And Muhammad Ali he goes, You're the promoter? He says, Yeah. He says, Oh, you're the one that steals all these money from all these guys in here, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> I went, 
Hey, I'm sitting there like, holy fuck, I can't believe he said that. Did he say that? But I noticed. Yeah, he did. And uh, and I noticed uh, Ric Flair walked in, and he had a little man with him. I didn't know. The little man sat over in the corner. And uh, Ric Flair was talking. And, and then, you know, finally everybody up, got up and left. And this man walked over to me and he says, hello, I'm a, I'm Jimmy Crockett uh-huh. and, uh, uh, on NWA. He said, y'all are world news, <laughs> you and your partner. I uh-huh. said, beg your pardon. He uh-huh. said, you're world news. I said, look at this. He said, y'all popped this territory. And, and Dusty and I are taking over TBS, so we're going to go worldwide. And we'd like for you to be a part of NWA, mm-hmm. and he goes, uh, and I and I, I says, well, we're doing real good here. He says, I know you are, but this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And he says, I know your dad. You can ask your dad about me. Uh, and I was looking for something new. You know what I'm saying? You, I didn't want to ride my ride out. I wanted to be. I wanted to go out there. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And. Uh, he says, uh, whatever you're making here, I'll double it. You know, so uh, it's a lot to think about when you're a kid, too. But you know what? The reason I'm not rich today, Doug, is, is why I'm making my kid uh, graduate college. Uh, uh, if I knew now, then I'd have to be the richest man in the world. I can't believe I, we got screwed. But it was my fault because I wasn't educated enough to know. And I'm serious. I was just a young I was kid. Gonna, I was going to ask you about that. How much money do you think? Did you get paid for your pictures in Mid Atlantic, Charlotte? No, no, no. no. You we get sued. paid for t- or You get paid for t-shirts paid. or anything? No, we got screwed, Dutch, out of everything what? because I wasn't educated enough to know. Now I'm going to tell you something. My biggest year in the business and I didn't know this till later on because I wasn't educated enough to know and this is the reason we got fired and I left because I finally figured out uh, that we, we didn't get fired well I, I'll go into that in a minute but my biggest year was that was $125,000 mm-hmm. okay and Bobby Eaton who we were wrestling them guys made 250000 a year and I'm going, holy fuck, I didn't, you know, I, I and, you know, then it really got to me. Then after they closed down, you know, Robert and I sued them well, about I our stuff. Know and, you know what? And and the damn gimmick man, they brought him in and they told him to tell the truth and we would not prosecute him. He said, well, I made a million dollars off the side on them. But in other words, the, he stole the million dollars. <laughs> Off the website? Off our gimmicks. No, they're gimmicks. Wow. We didn't have websites then. They didn't have website then, you know? Uh-huh. You know, uh so he stole all this your money. Stuff. Huh? He stole your they money. They stole from us. What's that? Yeah, that's they what I'm saying. They, they stole from you. They 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 what well, listen to me, they raped me. <laughs> they raped me and they because I wasn't educated enough to know. Then when I figured out. A lot of things. See, a lot of things went on Dutch that nobody knows about, and, and anybody. Well, they know it now. When, when you're not, when you're not in that fucking meeting with me, Dusty and Crockett, okay, you don't know. No, you see what I'm saying? So don't yeah. act like you know, because you wasn't in there. Uh, I don't know precisely. Look here, Richmond, Virginia. You see that picture? Uh-huh. Richmond, Virginia. I beat Ric Flair for the world title. Yep. And I came back to the dressing room. Uh, and they told me, so now we, we can put the world title on you. We're going to have to let your partner, Robert, go. Uh, he says, well, she's going to have to put people over that you beat, and you're going to have to beat him, too. Uh, and it wasn't that, Dutch. It's when I sparked up. I just handed the belt back to him. I said, I don't want it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's not that. And it, it's like I told you earlier, I have ba- I have some bad problems. One of them is being honest. And another one is 
loyalty. When mm -hmm. I give my heart, my loyalty to you, I, I mean it. You're, when I tell you you're my friend, you're my friend. I, tell you, I love you. I love you. And that, and that's, that's it. It's nothing else. Nothing else matters. That's when I go to bed at night, by God, I can go to sleep and I don't have to worry about where I screwed somebody and the Lord Almighty you know, upstairs. No, see, I, I read, I read that one time that you they were going to put the title on you, or they did put the title on you. Then they told you they're going yeah. to let they're going to release Robert, and you said, yeah, "No, I'm yeah, not doing to... that." And you said, yeah. "Just take it back or don't do it because I don't think that's right or something." Well, yeah, that's that's what happened. But listen, but see, I was the luckiest guy in the world at that time. The only reason all this happened was because uh, Magnum TA had a car wreck, and they were proving mm -hmm. him for the world championship, and they didn't yeah. have nobody to go in there. And Ric Flair, you know, he fucking loved us. So, well, he loved me anyway, man. He's, he's the one that sent Jimmy Crockett down to Louisiana uh, to uh, to watch us because he's been coming in working the territory. He said, he's anything. <laughs> Guys, are over, man. Jesus. Uh, so, <clears throat> but we did all that. But you know, it, then it comes down to where. And listen to me. I didn't do no more drugs than anybody else did. Uh, only thing, only reason you had back then was cocaine, and uh, yeah. it's because they didn't make they didn't make monster drinks in. They didn't do yeah. all this stuff. Hell, one night I'll be in Tampa, Florida. The next night I'll be in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, hell, you didn't even out. I even flew from Los Angeles to Tokyo and wrestled Ric Flair and got back on the plane and we wrestled two days or how long it took us to get back to New York that night. And you wonder why come I snorted cocaine? No shit. Well, hell. Okay, now, I told a guy the night, I'm in a dressing room and I watched this kid drink five monster drinks that big. You hear me? That tall. And I did tell him that. I, I told him I, I, I might have been wrong. I said, "Dude, you ever heard of cocaine?" I said, "One line." I said, "It's fucking cheaper than what you're doing there." <laughs> I mean, and mm -hmm. I think probably better for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, but I, you know, I grew up getting all that, all that out. But same way, uh, I, I told it, Cody, and ahead. I told Dusty Road, Dustin Rhodes too. I said, "Listen, buddy." I loved your daddy. I loved all of them. And him had more fuck you fights than you'd ever fucking know. I said, you don't know. And, and, and if you ever worked for Dusty, you know. I mean, the first time, this is when it really got me. And Robert don't even know this. You know, I, I go to the office. Dusty called me down to the office every Monday. And, I, and this is a great compliment, Dutch. And even his, I did a podcast for his granddaughter, and she told me, she said, I asked my grandpa, besides yourself, who's the greatest baby face in the world? <laughs> and he says, above me, Rick Morton. He said, he was the greatest mm -hmm. baby face because he, and this is what I was getting to because he would call me down to the office every Monday because we do TV on Tuesdays. And he would set up an angle. And see, and a lot of guys don't understand this. When, when you're a booker and you have something in your mind, and you look around, even though they're great workers, you can't make that son of a bitch understand what you want, what you really want out of this angle. You see what I'm saying? And I and I understood that. And Dusty liked me for that because I understood and see, and the only thing that was about was selling, was getting the angle over what the hell done to you and make the police people believe what you're doing. You know, and, and, and he... I had that ability. It wasn't that I just had, and see, that was for me when I rode down the road with guys like you and Ken Lucas. Okay. They made me understand that. You see, it wasn't nothing that I was better, but but when I was a kid, I listened because I wanted that my daddy telling me, see my main event, brother, is just as good as main event. Sometimes you've mm -hmm. got a job, you see. And when you're over like that. But I never forget when we first shot the angle with the Midnight Express and uh, that A team and a B team. We were the B team. And uh, Dick Murdoch got in trouble and he had to be on the B team. But I get to that in a minute. But we were in Charlotte, <laughs> North Carolina. We wrestled. 
the Midnight Express and the A-Team were in Baltimore, Maryland, Ric Flair, all them. I uh, see Dick Murdoch, I think, wrestled short south, the semi-main event. That's what kind of card we had. You understand? Mm-hmm. I don't think the Kansas Jayhawks were then, there then. Oh, we'd have been, been on, on that. BT we'd have been on that card with you, I'm sure. But yeah, continue. But, but listen up. And uh, in Baltimore, you know, they didn't draw nobody. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Now we're in Charlotte on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, Dusty calls me. He said, "Come down now. You come down to the office today." He said, "I want to talk to you about an angle." So, all right. But I go in there and I sit down in front of him and. and Dutch, he looks at me and says, son, I know you're in the wrestling business, but you got to understand one thing. He said, it's rules that you got to learn for yourself and you'll learn along the way. I said, what's that, Dutch? He said, you never sell out a fucking arena when I'm not on it. Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard that. I've heard that story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never sell out a arena when I'm not on the card. Uh, <laughs> then, it was, then it was just natural. But I'm telling you, he had Mick Dirt on that. And we're doing the TV. And he goes, and Mick Murdoch. <laughs> Guys out there, any of y'all ever didn't meet Dick Murdoch? I feel sorry for him. He was the funniest, greatest individual. Work his ass off. I mean, and do, and, mind. And do nothing and have the people falling out of their seats. I saw yes. him one night. He took an arm drag. I swear to God, the people went nuts. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Why, why are they going? Because of the way he sold it. He, he was yes. still selling it five minutes later, grabbing his back. Oh, yes. my and God, was, getting mad oh, at the and people. I, and, and, and that'll be another story to tell you why in a minute. But 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 Dusty, we was here, and, the, and Dusty looks at Murdoch and says, hey, did you learn your lesson yet? He said, what are you talking about? He said, are you ready to come back to the A team? <laughs> and Murdoch goes, well, hell no. I'll make more money on the B team. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds just as sounds exactly like Did you ever like wrestle with the old Sportatorium in Dallas on the ring oh, yeah. they used to have there? Though I'm talking about the old ring Devon Eric's had there. I don't know if it's an old ring or not. I, was yeah, only because there they, like I think they once, took twice. it down. Okay. Now, the first time I went there was years ago. And uh, I'm wrestling Dick Murdoch. And Murdoch tells me, he goes, uh, don't even go to a knee in this ring. <laughs> and I says, what? He said, do not take a bump. And I said, what's the matter? He said, you'll find out when you get out there. Well, see, I didn't know this, Dutch. And I don't know a lot of people know this. You know, that ring was a concrete stage mm-hmm. with four posts in it. With the thing over it. It was concrete. And uh, I got out of the ring. I'm going, holy shit. And if you notice back then, and years ago, but I think they finally took it out, put a ring in the middle. They didn't have, you watch the matches, nobody took a bump. <laughs> nobody <laughs> even went off their feet. And I did something where Murdoch hit me, and I went to a knee, and damn, my knee didn't kill me for a week. And uh, I'm thinking, boy, how hardcore. That's when the first time I got to meet Brock <laughs> I went You got down to meet to who? Dick- Bronco Lubitsch, the referee. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I went to cover Dick Murdoch and he counted with his feet. He went one. Two. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. Hey, and me, you know, Dickie's so funny anyway. I, you know, I'm wrestling him on tape and I'm crying. Dutch. I'm laughing so hard. I can't. Trying to kayfabe, trying to get the people out. But. But other than that, gosh, I'm muddy. Uh, let me let me ask you about Junkyard Dog. Was so he over? Right. Was he over? You damn right, buddy. You damn right, he was over. Now, you know what? I learned a lot from Dog too. Yeah. You know, you see, when you're in the territory back then, and and, and you know, just like I do, when you're in the territory, you got to have your top baby face. You got to have your black, top black star. You know you. Your Spanish star, but Junkyard Dog, he was, uh, he was that everybody star, mm-hmm. and he and he's one that smartened me up, especially with the Bed Not Express. He says, "Now when you go out there, he said I've been here many a times, and now when they get in the heat on you, the people get quiet." 
He said, hey, get quiet, realize we're in because they're coming in. <laughs> and he was right, buddy. I mean, look here, boy, you have them people going, and all of a sudden, they, you don't hear nothing. The whole E section will come in the rink. Uh, but dog was over like that. And uh, you know what? And he was good at what he'd done, too. He was a great talker. You know, Sylvester was a good friend of mine. And, you know, the business lost the treasure when he lost him, too. You know, he uh, went to, he made his oldest daughter a promise that he'd uh, go watch her graduate. And he drove to watch her graduate over in North Carolina. And on the way home, driving back to Louisiana, fell asleep. Mm. And, uh, got killed in a car wreck. Chuck Yard mm -hmm. Dog was my friend. I liked him, you know. We all get a lot of heat for a lot of things that we've done, but he had the biggest heart of any man uh, I ever seen. I, you know, uh, he, and he didn't take no shit off nobody either. <laughs> yeah. Good guy. I yes, was in sir. Puerto Rico with him. Uh -huh. Hurricane was coming in. Yeah. And we both rushed to the airport because I'd, I'd done this already twice already. I mm -hmm. would beat the hurricane there and I'd leave on this one. They'd already shut the airport down and dog, we couldn't get out. Oh my God. And then we yeah. had to go back to that hotel and we sat back and all the lights were knocked out. The only thing on was a, a street lamp that had a battery in it. That's the only reason it was on. And we <laughs> sat there all night long for that hurricane coming through. The next day got, got up, the, play, the place was all to hell. Yes. Yeah, but, all the stores and restaurants, of course, are closed. And me and Junkyard Dog went down to uh, a big hotel on the corner, and they had a soup line there. <laughs> yes, if the people you. wanted something to eat, you stood yeah. in that line, and they would give you some soup and some bread or something. I remember me and Dog standing there, and some fans come up, and they said, <laughs> Uh, are you dirty, Dutch? Are you scared, dog? We said, yeah. Hey, you should have like you should have did like you did to me. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I after, got you. Hey, after I hadn't I hadn't eaten like twenty four hours. Hell, it was. I don't give a crap what it was. I you was eating. Kidding. It. You know, I oh, learned yeah. that lesson when I was in Japan. First time I went to Japan, you mm -hmm. know, when you went out of the city and went Americanized, they bring shit to your plate, and they still be crawling. You know, you got eating that shit. Okay, after two days, you go back to that same restaurant and you order three of that shit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you so hungry, I ain't lying. How long were you in Smoky Mountain? Oh, I was there to uh, uh, about I'd say the whole time, about three months before the you know Jimmy Cornette fired me. Worst thing you ever done, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, I was there. I loved Smoky Mountain Wrestling, too. This was a deal between uh, Tracy Smothers and me. And uh, Tracy got to Cornette <laughs> before I did, so he fired me. And, uh, and three months later, they closed the territory down. <laughs> but we, I had a good run there, Dutch. Yeah, you did. You know, I had a good run there. I mean, it was, we had a, I had a one, I still here. I stayed here. Sure, reason I live up here in Bristol, up here in the mountains. Mm -hmm. I uh, moved up here in Smoky Mountain and uh, back in 92, 93, something like that. And I've been here ever since. I know we still have my mom and daddy's house in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but uh, I'll, well, I'll who, live up here. Who, who's in that house now? You rent it out or? No, no. Uh, my oldest uh, brother, his, his wife died. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, he that they stayed there, him and my other brother, to uh, until my mama died. You know, my mama died in the house there, and my little brother died there a couple of years ago. My little brother Donnie, did you, did you ever meet him? Oh yeah, yeah. He uh, he wasn't feeling good, and he went to the doctor, and they told him he had liver, lung, and kidney cancer. So we took him to the hospital, you know, for his first treatment. And then the doctor just come out and told me, I'm glad he didn't tell me the truth. He said, just take him home. He says, uh, we're going to put him on, uh, whatever you call it. And the nurses, hospice. Come out. yeah, hospice, hospice. We put him on hospice. 
and he's going to die in two, three months. He said he's eat up. And uh, we took him home Dutch, and two or three months he died. You well, know, I, hate to, I hate to hear yeah. that. Yeah, and you knew my mother, too. My oldest son was telling me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to him early this morning, Dutch, and he's, he was telling me about, <laughs> about my my mother. You know, she she had that lung CPOD, or you want to call it, I don't know how you spell it, but it's, uh, he laid in the bed with her. He was laying in the bed with her, hugging her, because he loved my mama, my oldest son did. And she died in his arms. You know, it's sad, but it's life. And you knew I my daddy. That. Yep. My daddy, you knew my dad. Mm -hmm. As I hope it's the same thing, because this is what I'm trying to tell Robert, and Robert don't get it to understand. And, and really, it's it's okay. It don't matter. I mean, we're too old to be wrestling anyway. And and the, and the, for the last year, Dutch, we go to the ring, and Robert just stayed on apron. He never got in the ring. You know, he couldn't. But it was all right. I felt obligated. What, what else? What else is different? Yeah, but I felt between obligated now and thirty years that. ago. <laughs> yes, I got mad at him one time. I told him, I said, next time I just get eight by ten, stick on the goddamn ring post, so nobody will miss you. You know, and but, but you know, sometimes you feel ob obligated, Dutch, and uh, like I told you, I, I'm a lawyer, and I, and I don't know. I kept him, but now I, what what I was getting into though is now I'm spending time with my son, mm -hmm. like I spent with my daddy on the road, and see, he's about he's a little bit, uh, you know, he's 22. I'm with him. We work shows. I, we both work for NWA. Matter of fact, my son's a head of, mar uh, of marketing for NWA, and it was picked up. It's what he's taking in college. He has a contract there to get to when he gets out of college, or grow a further if he wants to. Uh, but it, we get to spend a lot, of, and me and him do a million. We may, well, we're on independence, so we're the independent outlaw, brother. We're the kings mm -hmm. of independence. And I'm, I'm serious. We do good business, Dutch. You know, I bet you it, do. Yeah, we do good business. And, and I, have a, I have a question here that yes. somebody has asked me to ask you about. Have you ever thought about cutting your hair in a match? Uh, well, I was going to do that. <laughs> I was going to do that with the, remember, the Bushwhackers. They were the yeah. sheep herders then in, in North Carolina. I'm going to do a thing where he's going to cut my hair to do an angle. But Dusty was pissed off at us. And I think George South beat me in a match and somebody else, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I got where I just didn't give a shit and I didn't do it. But no, I, uh, this is who I am. This is mm -hmm. who I am. This is who I am. I'm never going to cut my hair. You know, you, you, you get your good people on. And I tell my son about this, too. On social media, when somebody says something bad, they're just the most miserable son of bitches in the world. They, you know, they, they have nothing good to say to nobody. They have nothing good to say. This is me. If you mm -hmm. know anything about my wrestling business at all, you know, Ricky Morton has a fucking moment. He's always had one. And he's never going to cut it. All right? That's just who I am. And that's right now being 67 years old. I can walk in anywhere, and what that's what really pisses Robert off because he, you know, I walk right in, and I'm recognized right off the bat. You hear what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I went to the Tennessee football game Saturday. Holy shit! I thought they were going to move me, you know, because people was just all around. And uh, but she said that's cool though, Dutch. I, I live for that. You yeah. know, my son asked me. They say we get tired of us. Say hell no, I don't get tired of it. That's how I still make a living. But right. uh, you damn right, and that's. You know, if it, hadn't been for, if it hadn't have been for wrestling, you and me both would have had to go out and get a job and actually yes. work. I get a job. <laughs> Dad, I, ain't, I ain't doing that crap. Hey, Shit. Dutch, listen to me, and, and I'm not trying to be mean. I, I'm going to have to go. I had to get to the airport. Mm -hmm. I, I shot over well, my My God, I might not let you go. And, and, let, uh, let me ask you one thing. Album. How the old are you right now? Album. I'm 67. Hey, how long are you going to go till you stop working totally? Well, that's, I'm working at Dutch. But you know what? Me and Robert are starting to do a lot of signings. You know, we yeah. do these Comic-Cons. I still do a lot of them. But it's going to come that part of time that we're going to have to do that. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm going to stay here long as my For son your last match, school. I would go to the ring in a wheelchair, get uh, out, and do a couple of moves and get back in the chair and leave just to set a record. <laughs> you because know if you wrestle, if you wrestle to one day after you're 70, that yeah. means you, you've wrestled like probably six decades. Yeah, I got you. You know, you what know I, mean? I told Billy, Billy Corgan, you know, Billy Corgan owns NWA. I know him. Yes, he's a good guy. Uh, I promised him that when, you know, Robert got his hip replaced and when he comes back, I promised him that uh, we do the Rock and Roll Express last match on NWA. So he wanted to do that. So I'm going to do that for him. But listen, I'm, I'm going to say something right now, and I hope you take this, and I hope that you know who I am. I'm grateful for every moment that I had in this business, and I'm grateful for every moment I got to know you, your wife, and your daughters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, See, I don't forget nothing. You were good to my daddy. My daddy loved you. I, I watched. <laughs> you, you can make my daddy laugh. They piss on himself, you know, because it was funny <laughs> going down the roads, you know, and talk about how hot it was. And I ran a right side of your right. Oh, my God. He had. <laughs> I still remember that story. Hey, yeah. boy. How hot was it? It's hotter now. Oh, my God. What he's. I'd yeah. have to think he, about that he, story. 130. But God. 130. And the shade. 30. the winter. 40. <laughs> oh, he was too much. No, I, but I loved, you, I loved your daddy. Yeah, he was yes. funny. And I, I loved you. That's what I was getting to. Thank you, Dutch. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for teaching me a lot. And I promise you, I absolutely love you. Thank you. Thank you, too. Where but are you going life. today? Where's this plane taking you to? I'm going to right, that right down the road from you. I oh, wish okay. I did this podcast at your house today, tonight. Sure you should have. We'd, we'd, have had a, <laughs> we'd have had a few drinks. Listen, Ricky, yeah. safe travels and okay. uh, stay in contact. Love you, man. I will. Bye, Doug. We Bye. never got to the Steve Kern story either. Well, that's for part two. Part two. That's part two. Part two. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We didn't do the plugs. And um, I don't know where the books are we, either. Anyway, we've we, got. Oh, we didn't you. do the. We didn't do the the plugs. No, we didn't. Oh. So there's two books over Dutch's left shoulder there. The sure um, are. The world according to Dutch and Tales from a Dirt Road. If you want them unsigned, you can buy them from Amazon. And if you want them signed, you can go to Dirty Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail dot com. Send an email that way, and you will be able to sort out a price signed for those two tomes. And I'm also, I do the University of Dutch diplomas mm -hmm. that are actually doing very well. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's their, uh, see the price this week, price changes. It's $45, which is shipping included. And you write me and tell me what you want the uh, diploma to say. Your name is, is installed on uh, as a graduate in the, uh, and it's a PhD in the wrestling arts. And it's actually signed by the dean, which is Dutch Mantel, that's me, and by the provost of the college, uh, Zeb Coulter. Plus, it has a stamp and it's sealed and it's really, a, really, a, it comes ready to hang. And it's really, really, it's impressive. I'm, in, I'm kind of impressed by my idea that I even came up with. So who else has a wrestling diploma? Well, I know Nobody. I don't. You've been threatening to send me one for a year, and you've not sent it me. Well, I got it made. You didn't, you never give me your address. You, I did give you my address. I'll send you my address. Well, hang on. Do you know what? I need to send you my new address. You can send it there. Okay. Whenever, whenever I move I'll, in. I'll do that as the house warning. <laughs> yeah. I will, that, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll have it on do. the back wall and everything. It'd be great advertising. I will, I will, I will send you one. Very give good. me the new, give me the new address. When is the new address going to be? Uh, I well, mean, well, ready to go. Well, by the time this comes out, I'm hoping now. So, but we'll just. When see. are you? When are you moving into the house? This uh, late November. We've got an okay. eye on it. So late right. November, move in, and uh, hopefully, I'll be in for there, and then. Bright, lovely, very good certificate very good. to go in there. And before I go, I actually found the books: uh, the Dwayne the Rock Johnson, the People's Champion, there and Owen is. Hart, King of Pranks. Two fine, fine books. By now, hopefully, the uh, pro wrestling tea shops open, 
and you know five stars on itunes good reviews and all that but for now thank you very much for watching we'll catch you again next week and dutch we the people we the people <laughs>